And, you know, we had went through three or four different gangsters like that. You know, Gene Griffin had came with, with Ted <laughs> and we had issues with Gene. So, you know, we were accustomed to that type of thing. <laughs> okay. You could call you crazy was yep. I'll Be Sure song. And oh, then, and then you, you know, uh, okay, you know yes, Gene, Griffin, Gene Griffin took the song. You Can Call Me Crazy was a song that we wrote for Al. And then Gene said, take it back. And that's why I'm, that's why it's on the guy album. Wow. So, oh, hold on. I want to say something. People, I, when I got signed to Teddy Riley, I was signed to a production company called GR Productions. Teddy Riley and Gene Griffin. Gene Griffin was like your godfather, godfather, yes. godfather, right? Yes. Okay. Gene Griffin, so you understand people, Gene Griffin was the first Suge Knight. Okay, that's yes. a fact. Like, he yes. was the first Suge Knight to the point that he taught Suge Knight. So, Yes, he the did. Things that, the things that Suge Knight did, when I was watching him do it, I was like, that ain't nothing but Gene Griffin because Gene taught Suge the game and how to maneuver. On a regular basis, Gene would go and beat people up. I don't even want to get into the stories. I'm happy I survived it with one lung. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I'm like... <laughs> It was it was crazy stuff. Like Gene was not the dude to play with, man. He he was he, he was a real but serious the, dude, man. The the thing about it is, being that I was his 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 godson and you know his his breadwinner, I was like Michael Jackson to him. Yes, and yes. he was Joe Jackson without the belt because he didn't have to say things twice to me because I was more in love with doing music than going out and hanging out at the parties or, you know, going to find a girl. Fat man scoop. From under Harrell to, um, to Teddy, everyone, just Gene was, you know, he taught Suge Knight how to do stuff. I, I remember seeing Fat Man, Fat man, man Scoop man interviewing scoop. Teddy Riley yeah. saying that he was part of the little camp back in the days and he escaped with just one rib broken. So, you know, the, the, the picture is playing that Gene was not the easiest guy to deal with. Well, I'm um, going to give you a story. I'm going to give you a quick one real quick. Go ahead. I'm, I'm going to give you a little dirt. You know what I'm saying? Uh, not really dirt, but when we were deciding to, to move away from that situation, um, uh, the lead singer... Uh, had mentioned to uh, uh, this female, you know, we about to leave Gene, we about to do this, we about to do that, and Gene come through here, you know, I got some form if he show up. You know, just, you know, just talking to this chick. Chick in the strip club, next thing you know, I guess, I assume Gene was at the strip club, I don't know what happened, but somehow the girl got the word back to Gene, so next thing you know, Gene's like, hey guys, I want to have a beat with y'all. We're like, okay, cool. Gene, boom, knock on the door, it's Gene and this other dude, and next thing I know, Gene walk in is me, Diesel, Kelvin. At the time, he Dries Muhammad. I don't know if you remember him. He was in a group called ARB at the time. And he he rapped on uh, um, Nothing But A Party. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah at the end, yeah. Um, so Gene walk in, and he look at Dara like, so I heard you had a, uh, 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 you know, you're going to handle my bit. You know, you're going to handle me if, if you see me. <laughs> Gene had a gun in his hand. Oh, goodness. Bam, pistol whip. You know, everybody get on the floor. So... Wow. You know, that's 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 where that went. And then, you know, it, it didn't go any... F from there, he said what he said, and he left. We were like, bro, we got to... That's it. We done. And he knew we were done then, but... So I think the big question that, you know, I've, and I've, I've, I've seen a lot of the interviews about what really happened and stuff, but was it a case where, you know, you were watching what was happening, how, you, you know, your very best friend was being manipulated by um, by Gene. I've heard Andre Harrell, I think two weeks before he died, give an interview with Kenny Burns, talking about how Gene came to his house at three in the morning, four, four, six in the morning to get the publishing from, from. so it's quite known that he, he, he you know, he, he, he was quite a, a tough character. You had some very interesting characters involved with, 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 uh, with, with Teddy Riley and Guy. And his name was Gene Griffin, God rest the dead. And there's an Uptown movie coming to BET. Give them a round of applause in the comments, y'all. There's a movie coming to BET, a scripted series about the Uptown Records uh, offering. And I'm going to play Gene Griffin. But um, what was that relationship like with you and Gene? Because th this is the first I ever heard of some gangster shit other than the, you know, the early shit. Um, Gene Griffin, that was some, that was some uh, real old school gangster shit. He... Um, I signed guy already. He he gets out of jail, uh, and he's probably doing. He did some serious time for uh, for different 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 
you know, drug whatever. things. Right, whatever. Right. Murders, I don't know what. But he had he had gangster rap all over him when he got to town. <laughs> right. Right? So um, I met him at a party, right? I think I was throwing an uptown party. And I had all the artists there. And he was there. And, and Teddy introduced me. And, you know, ball head, big mustache, jewelry, suede, slip-ons, silks, outfit. I was like, all right. He said, what's happening? What's happening? I was like, I could just feel the darkness coming on to me, right? <laughs> and, so, and, so, and so that was the first time I met him. Then um, we, we'd be around, I kind of feel like he was saying to me, like sometimes I'd be at the studio and he says, he'll say, no disrespect, that now that I'm here, I'm back, I'll be at the studio. And, and anything you need from them, you call me. He, so and, he, he, tried, he tried to remove you from the situation. Right. On my budget. Wow. Uh, he said, you're going to be the record company, and I'm going to be the manager. So I said, okay, now, obviously, I got a, a, a relationship with Teddy. Yeah. Right? Uh, he already made Mr. Big Stuff for me. He made some I'll Be Sure records for me. And I knew him since he was 12 years old. Yep. So I, I was pushed back by that. So then one day, he comes knocking on my door in New Jersey right. at 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> right <laughs> I get up out of bed I got my girl laying next to me I get up I'm saying to myself who the fuck is knocking like this at 7.30 I peep out the peephole and I see a bald head and big mustache I'm like oh my Jesus Gene Griffin at my house I just think know where I live right <laughs> so, so 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 I open the door and I say what's happening kind of early huh he said yeah this can't wait uh, he said, get dressed, meet me downstairs. Right. Uh, and I, I, okay. I said, okay, give me five minutes, get dressed. Right. I close the door. I'm saying to myself, all right, if I don't go downstairs, he's coming up in here. <laughs> then, then, then we got all kinds of other issues and all kinds of innocent people involved in the bullshit. Right. So I, so, so I said, nothing to do but go downstairs. So I, get, I go downstairs, I get in the bins. Teddy, Teddy Riley's in the bins too. I, I, I get in the bins and I felt like um, remember that scene in Sparkle when, when the boyfriend who was the manager of the group, the white guys came and picked him right, up. Right, right. I, I felt like him. I right. felt like him. So he came to sign uh, it was an issue about the publishing. Teddy's okay. publishing was signed to me but it really wasn't. Right. Because when, when I signed Teddy Rupp to after Teddy Riley's publishing, Teddy already had half of it signed to Zomba. Clyde right. Caldwell's company, Jive Records. So right. my lawyer was the same lawyer as Clive Caldwell used. Right. Paul Schindler, like grew up in the I service. remember. So, so my lawyer told me he, he could sign this as part of an overall agreement, I think, but you know you're not going to own that. I was like, okay, all right, let's just get, get it signed. Let's not stop the signing for nothing. Right. right? So we, we got him signed. And so when Gene came back, that was one of the ways he, he was going to get some money through the publishing company. So I told him, I had to pause. I was thinking to myself, you know, you can't give a gangster one thing because you give him one thing, it leads to everything. Right. So I'm like, I can't give you this because I'm really not giving you shit right. to myself, right? So I tell him up front, I said, the publishing was never real in me because the Lord already signed to somebody my attorney represent. But right. if you want me to sign it over to you and you want to have that fight, knock yourself out. Right. And I gave it to him. But when I went upstairs, I said, oh, this, this nigga will here. Yeah. This is this is messy. Yeah. This is messy. Now and, I ain't gonna tell it, go it goes all the way to the head. Um it, it goes all the way to the head. Um fuck it, I'm gonna tell y'all. So anyway, come on, come on, Drake, come on. So 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 I go to uh MCA one day, right? I yeah. go to Timmy Redford's office. Timmy Redford is the A and R guy there. Yeah. So Gene is in there. I walk in, Gene grabs me by my um trench coat. Right. And he doesn't punch me, because that'll leave a mark. He back, he, he back slaps me. What? Right? My glasses go flying. What? I jump up. I jump up. I'm ready to tackle him. Timmy Redford, who's 250 pounds of straight muscle. Right. Timmy Redford grabs everybody like the rock and right. held everybody off. And then he starts screaming at Gene. Gene, you can't do that up in here, whatever. So Gene runs out like a bad guy. Right. right. So 
I, I, I settled myself, but I'm shook. Right. I just got somebody just put their hands on me at the at, at the offices. Right. I was like, "What's this? This is the so, record business. This so, ain't jail." So, so, so I go downstairs. Yeah, I bump into Christopher Williams. He's right. not my artist yet. Right. I just know Chris through Jimmy. Right. Jimmy. Jimmy's vice president of uptown. Chris was his friend. That's how I knew him. Jimmy so, Love. So, 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 uh, shout out to Jay Lovelace. Uh, so, Chris said to me. Yo, you look a little shook. I said, yeah, I am a little shook. I said, I was just upstairs and got into it with Gene Griffin. He put his hands on me. And Chris said, you know, that nigga's a real gangster. I said, trust me, I know. He said, you got a gun? I said, no. He said, you want to get one? I said, yeah, I know where to get it. Let's go. So we went uptown. We went uptown. We went uptown to the Bronx, to the Jamaican spot, where they make, you know, they, 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 they make the roots and all that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we go to the back of that joint and they pull out pistols. So I, I'm like 38s, 22, da, da, da. So I get a 38, right? So I take it back to Jersey. I live in Alpine at this time. I yeah. take it back to Jersey and I start shooting in my backyard to see what it felt like. Right. So I got the gun. Now we're thinking this week is going to be the impact convention. Right. And Impact was the convention that we would go to in April in Atlantic City. Yeah. And Impact was a chart. Yeah. And it was a great place to bring your, your radio friends from all across the country. Yeah. So that you could promote your new artists, have showcases and therefore. So now I already broken Heavy D at Impact two years ago. Then I yep. broke I'll be sure a year after that. So right. Impact is expecting me. And I got God. Right? So all, it's already booked. We're already all going. So on Monday, Gene puts his hands on me. On Friday, I got to be in Atlantic City around him, right? Right. With everybody, with the buzz was that, right? So I get to Atlantic City. We get on, we get on the elevator. Me and Russ. Me and Russ. I hadn't seen Russ all that week. All right. that week of the beef, I hadn't seen him. So I just saw Russ. So uh, we get on the elevator. Bill Underwood sticks a hand in the elevator and comes in. Now, Bill Underwood was, was allegedly running Nicky Barnes' thing. The murder yeah, eight, a right? gangster. Alleged, allegedly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so um, Bill comes in the elevator and he, he looks at Russ and he's looking at Russ real funny. And, and I'm like, what's the matter, Bill? And, and he said, yo, man, somebody be speaking my name where they shouldn't be speaking my name. Now, this dude, Bill Underwood, this is the real thing, the movies. This right. ain't play, play. This is professionalism. Everybody, everybody gets going, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so I, I know him because he got Johnny Gill at MCA. So I know him in passing, and then I know, I, then I know his cousins. Right. So I know, like, he, I, I'm a pass, right? I'm, I'm Harlem. Wow. So I got my Harlem pass. I'm standing here calling. Right. And, but he, he's on Queens, like, yo. Russ says that uh, I see your, your uh, I see your name on, on my record receipts and, and and I just don't understand it. It says here two hundred fifty thousand clean records, da 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 da. And so so Bill said, What you say? He, like, like you haven't been around a guy who's tall, but you don't realize they're tall. All of a sudden all of a sudden he went from regular height six feet to six foot four. You know, he just <laughs> He puffed up <laughs> on you, Nick. Yes. Yes, so I said, I said to Bill, I don't, Bill, Russ don't know what he's talking about. It ain't going to be no problem, right, Russ? Russ is never going to speak your name again, right, Russ? So next floor, Bill gets off. Me and Russ are standing there. We silent, right? In the elevator, right. right? <laughs> Russ gets off, and then I go to my room. So when I go to my room, Wolf is in my room with Jay Love, right? Uh -huh. Wolf is 19 years old. Right. So Wolf, Wolf is there. Rest he in got, peace. He got, he, rest in peace, Big Wolf. Wolf got grenades, daggers, glocks. He's ready to make a name for himself, right? And so, so. He got so, daggers, right? Yes. Nigga had daggers. Yes, yes. So he said to me, I, I'm, I got a suit. I'm just going to have all this in the suit. I'm going to walk behind you like I'm one of your associates. And I was looking at this 19 year old like, you one of my associates. Okay. So. It was six o'clock. There was nowhere else to go but upstairs to the to the uh, 
showcase. Right. So I thought, you know, I sat there, 559, I said, if I'm going to get it, let's get it. And I went up there at six on the nose, and people were there. And you know how you know people were waiting for you to show? Right. You felt the energy. Because people were walking up to me, giving me friendly pounds. Right. People, people saw Gene Griffin in the front and Bill Underwood right there. Bill Underwood was next to him. Right. But it was different, though. Bill Underwood had his arm around Gene like this. And, and Gene was kind of moving like a puppet. So I didn't understand what was going on. So I walked over there and, and Bill said, so you got a problem with Andre Harrell? And, and Gene said, no, man, I ain't got no problem. And Bill's arms getting tighter on his neck. Oh, and, and, shit. And, and so, and so it, I said, it didn't seem that way when you put your hands on me. That was a misunderstanding, man. That was a total misunderstanding. Man, you was good. And Bill got him like this. So Gene, Gene is six feet tall, 230 of muscle. Right. He looks under Bill Underwood's arm. Like I keep saying, Bill Underwood just start growing or something. He looks small and feeble under Bill Underwood. And right. he said, it, Bill said, is there a problem? He said, there's no problem. And there was no more problem. Wow. Dre, Dre, mm -hmm. first, give him a round of applause for that story in the comments. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, to press the notification bell so that you can be notified when we do have a new interview. Loads to come, but thanks a lot for watching. Mm -hmm.